Hello everyone, this is Professor Nchi Kun from Minimas. In this video, I am going to give you a tutorial on the approximate analysis of statically intermediate trusts. <coughs> so in this particular example, you are asked to determine approximately the force in the diagonal members of the truss. So in this case, we assume that the diagonals cannot support a compressive force. So meaning that the diagonal members of F, B, E, A, E, C, and D, C, if we find that any of this member is in compression, then we set it as a zero force member because the diagonal members cannot support a compressive force. So first of all, definitely we have to determine the support reactions. So in this case, we have a pin connection at joint A, pin support, and then a rocker support at joint C. So joint A, we are going to have two reactions, one in the vertical direction and one in the horizontal direction. At support C here, since it's a rocker, there is only one vertical reaction and there is no horizontal reaction. So in this case, we have AX, AY and CY. So this, all these uh, directions are assumed from in the first place. So we will find out whether our assumption is correct from the solution. So first of all, we sum total moment at joint A. So here we have a 40 kN force with a moment arm of 3 meters. So this 40 kN force produces clockwise moment about joint A. And we are taking anti-clockwise moment as positive. So therefore this 40 kN times moment arm of 3 meters has a negative sign. And then we have the 20 kN force and the moment arm to join A is 6 meters. So we have a moment of 20 kN times 6 meters and it's clockwise or so negative. And then we have another force which is CY with a moment arm of 6 meters from join A. So this CY produces anti-clockwise moment about join A. So it's a moment of CY times 6. So there is no other, any other force producing moment about joint A. So we equate all this to 0 and solving for CY, we get CY equals 40 kN and we have a positive solution meaning that the direction of CY is correct in the initial assumption. Let's move on to summing moment at joint C to solve for the other support reactions. So in this case, X passes through joint C, CY also passes through joint C, and this 20 kN force also passes through joint C. So they don't produce any moment of joint C. So let's look at this 40 kN force. It has a moment arm of 3 meters to joint C, and it produces an anti-clockwise moment about joint C. So in the clockwise moment, we take it as positive. So we have 40 times 3, which is positive. Let's look at this 50 kN force. And it has 6 meters of moment arm to join C. So it produces also an anti-clockwise moment about join C. So the moment is positive 50 times 6, which is the moment arm. And then we have another force, AY, having... 6 meters moment arm so it produces clockwise moment about joint C so clockwise moment we take it as negative AY times moment arm 6 meters and there is no other force producing moment about joint C so we equate this to 0 and solving for AY we get AY equals to positive 70 kN so positive meaning that the assumption of AY upward is correct. 
and then next we need to know what is ax so we sum total forces in the horizontal direction to be equal to zero so there is only one force in the horizontal direction ax so this has to be equal to zero because there is no other horizontal forces so in this case we want to get the diagonal the forces in the diagonal members of the truss so we're interested in F, FB, FEA, FEC, and FDB. So first of all, we look at the member force FB and member force EA. So for that, we need to cut across a section like this and then isolate this part of the structure as a free body diagram. So we are going to get something that is shown in this diagram here. So in this case, we have an external force of 50 kN acting at joint F. At the joint A, we have a support reaction that is going upward of 70 kN and then horizontal reaction is zero. And then the top part of the truss by inspection the top part is in compression so the top member here should be a compression member so FEF is a compression force and then we have the bottom part of the, the, of the truss is in tension so this force FAB is a tensile force and then by inspection also we know that this panel shear V Okay, by equilibrium of the vertical forces, we know that it should be 20 kN downward because this is 70 kN upward and this is 50 kN downward. So, mean that we need another 20 kN downward for equilibrium. So, mean that this panel shear is downward, which is equal to 20 kN. So this panel shear is actually the resultant from the horizontal, uh, not horizontal, should be vertical components of FBF and FAE. So the vertical component of FBF and FAE should be downward. So therefore, the direction of FBF should be slanting downward and the direction of FAE should be slanting downward as well. So with that, we can start analyzing the truss members, that is the diagonal member uh, force. So as mentioned in the question here, we assume that the diagonals cannot support a compressive force. So if at any time a uh, diagonal member force is in compression then we set this force to be zero meaning that any diagonal member that is uh, having compression it cannot support the compression force so therefore the force in the member is zero so it's required that FAE equals to zero in this case by inspection because FAE if we want to look at the component contributed to the panel shear, this FAE should be slanting downward to have a downward vertical component. So in this case, when we sum the total moment in the vertical direction of this free body diagram, we have 70 upward, so upward force we take it as positive, so 70 upward. And then we have this 50 kN downward, so downward we take it as negative. And then we have the vertical component of FBF which is downward. And this vertical component is FBF sine 45 degree. So when it's downward, we put a negative there. And then it's FBF sine 45 degree. 
Other than that, there is no other vertical force, so we equate this to zero. And solving for FBF, we have 28.28 kilonewton. So this force is slanting downward, and this is a tensile force in member BF. So this should be in tension. Okay. So F A B is equals to zero. So if you are interested to determine the forces of F E F, then we sum the total moment at A. But that is not of interest in this particular question. So and then we move on to determine what is the member forces in E C and db so for that we need to cut across a section here and isolate this part of the free body diagram isolate this part of the structure as a free body diagram then you should be getting a diagram which is as shown here So by inspection, we know that the panel shear should be downward because the total upward force is more than the total downward force. So we need another downward force for equilibrium. So in this case, the magnitude of this panel shear is 20 kN because this 20 plus this 20 downward must be in equilibrium with a total 40 kN of Upward force here. So from there, we know that this diagonal member force FBD and this diagonal member force FCE should be slanting downward. So in this case, we can see that FCE is a compression. So any diagonal member which is in compression, we assume that it cannot take the compression force so this force is set to be zero so meaning that member ce is a zero force member so with that from this free body diagram here we can sum all the total vertical forces to equal to zero and take the upward force as positive so in this case we have uh, 40 kN which is positive and then a 20 kN force which is uh, downward negative and then we have a vertical component from FBD which is downward so this vertical component is FBD sine 45 degree so we have FBD sine 45 degree and it's downward so we put the negative there and there is no other vertical forces by right there is still a vertical component from fce but since fce is zero so the vertical component is also zero so in this case solving for fbd we get fbd equals to 28.28 kilonewton which is tension so if you're interested in uh, getting member force fde and member for FBC, you can follow these two summation of moments at joint C and joint D for the solution. Thank you very much for watching.